Today we'll be looking at autocoding LangChain Dynamo, which uses entire LangChain documentation as a vector store, embedded as a CSV or as a JSON file to code near perfect Llama index code. Let's run this and see how it works. As you see, this is the code that generates Llama index programs, but we have a few other files which we're going to take a look at to crawl the documentation, to clean up the documents, to embed them, to extract uh, atomic meaningful code chunks, and then finally to uh, build Llama index code. Let's ask for a chatbot system with composable graph, which is a, a feature of Llama index. And then we are getting the code. As you see, we are importing vector store, service context, simple directory reader. We are importing OpenAI from Llama index and composable graph. And we are continuing to write the code. Here it's using Notion and Slack docs as an example. We are creating a composable graph from indices. Query engine is graph as query engine. And then we are querying it. Once the code is generated, it will be saved in response.py file. We are asking again, question answering with three index. We are, uh, it's importing three index, query engine uh, and some evaluator as well. It's, just, it's creating the three index query engine and uh, adds a sample question even, and then we have our result right here. Like I said, this uses the entire LangChain documentation and uh, always double check your code. And But once you have the general structure, it should be easy to debug if there are any issues. This is a variation of the LangChain Dynamo project I have created, which crawled the entire LangChain documentation and embedded it into a vector store so that we can create near perfect LangChain code. We will be overviewing the code for this Llama index project, but if you want a detailed review of the code, uh, I will be posting the link. And then please watch that video for more detailed code review. So at first we have crawled the entire uh, Llama index documentation, as you see, and then cleaned it up. And then using GPT-4, we extracted the atomic meaningful code blocks along with uh, descriptions for each and every one of them. So when we embed them and when we retrieve them, we have as much information about atomic code blocks as possible. Then we embed them and save them to a CSV and JSON file, and then we do similar to search over them and let GPT-4 write the Llama index code. The crawled and cleaned up documentation, along with all the code files, will be available at the $30 Patreon level. Extracted atomic code chunks and embeddings and all the code files will be available at the AI architect level. Extracting the code actually costs $30, so you can actually uh, download the code and do it yourself or become an AI architect and just download the extracted code pieces along with the embeddings. Same is true for the LangChain Autocoding Dynamo. All the data and the code files are available at Patreon and all the code files without the atomic uh, extracted code chunks and the embeddings is also available at the $30 Patreon level. Links will be in the description. Also at my Patreon, you'll have access to 120 plus other project files. Our first file is docscrawler.py, which starts with a uh, start URL, in this case, GPT index, right? Uh, English and stable, and also is a domain URL so that it makes sure, it makes sure that it doesn't go outside of that URL following the hyperlinks. Then we get all the hyperlinks and then get domain hyperlinks. And then we simply crawl and save them each to their respective files, which gives us the entire documentation. But as you see, many of the links in Llama index actually is broken. So that's why I have created the docs cleaner, which actually goes ahead and cleans the documents, removes all the ones that have 404 not found in them, such as this. So we only have the useful links. And then if we actually remove everything that comes uh, before this sentence. Uh, some documentation have a lot of explanation and uh, menu items and stuff. So essentially this just cleans it all up, okay? And then saves them under entire Llama index documentation. Well, it originally saves it to a co process folder, but I just renamed it as entire Llama index documentation. So these are all the useful URLs that are meaningful to us. And there's about 400 of them. Then we use the extract code parallel code, this is really the most important part, because we are actually going to take each and every one of these 
URLs, okay, which are quite long, and we wouldn't want to split it randomly, and we wouldn't want to embed it as it is. So we are actually sending each and every one of these to GPT-4, and then ask it to extract meaningful atomic code chunks along with explanations. As you see, we are we are using a GPT-4 call for that with function calling, and we'll uh, go over this here in a moment which then returns us code chunks and their explanations. And then using some dynamic coding, we actually uh, write them under extracted code and then save them with their explanations as comments and the code chunks like this. So that we have our very small chunks that are separated meaningfully by GPT-4. So when we do similar research, we can actually fit as many of them and as many of the meaningful forms to our current query as possible to get the best possible Lama index code. And then our next file is embedding embed.py, which simply takes each and every one of the extracted code, embeds it, and saves it as both as code embeddings.csv and code embeddings.json. After that, we can use build Lama index code to, uh, to actually ask for a Lama index system, and we will get our res response, and the response will be written in response.py file. So let's do a quick overview of the code. First, we use docs crawler to crawl the entire documentation. Always make sure to check the website's terms and conditions and its robot.txt file to make sure that it is okay to crawl that website. Then we use the docscleaner.py to actually remove any unnecessary files and remove any unnecessary text. Then we use extract code parallel.py file. And then here is a function to count tokens. I actually originally with LangChain implementation was actually sending the code files to uh, GPT 3.5 Turbo 16K to make sure if it actually contained any meaningful code. But for this implementation, I commented this out. Like I said, uh, or a very detailed code review is present in the LangChain video. Link will be in the description. Uh, and also because the Lama index documentation is almost one third the size, I actually decided to send each and every one to GPT 4. We are using Tenacity. Uh, just in case if any one of our API calls fails, then we are doing exponential back off and keep trying up to 10 attempts. Anyway, here's a system message. We are saying you are an expert code extractor. You are helping a user extract self-sufficient code from documentation as a single code block and provide detailed explanation of what the code does. We are only interested in docs which only contain code in them. If the doc does not contain code, please skip it. We are only interested in Python code. So, this essentially tells it to uh, extract only the meaningful uh, code chunks, atomic meaningful self-sufficient code chunks, and then we pass in the documentation here. Then we have a function call. Its name is write code, extract self-sufficient code from documentation. We have two parameters for it. One is the code, extract the self-sufficient code group, and its ex detailed explanation is a comment, right? We're going to add that as a comment later. And here, when we are actually defining the function call, we are always making sure that we are where GPT always calls this write code by giving it like this. But we are also giving a requirement for a response. We are saying JSON framework must be constructed with double quotes, double quotes within strings must be escaped with backlash. So this explanation actually helps GPT to return JSON.load compatible loads compatible uh, function definite uh, function call return. This is a quick little uh, cheat for that as a as a hack. And then we are using streaming response. And then once we have all our responses, then we lo load them with json.loads. And then we have a write code function, which actually puts the explanation as a comment, as you see here, and then adds the extracted code, such and so, and then saves it. Then we have a process single file, which essentially, essentially deals with directory operations and checks the tokens, make sure that we don't send any one that is over 15,500 tokens. Uh, because then it, will, it might just be useless. If it is more than 5,000 tokens, we are using GPT 3.5 Turbo 16K. Other than that, we are using GPT 4. And then we, our process docs function uses thread pool executor to do this in parallel, 10 at a time, so that this process completes uh, quicker. Like I said, this process costs around $30, and the link chain documentation code extraction costs about $75. I have both of them available in my Patreon. This then gives us all of our extracted code. Now here, what I've done is, as you see, we are also extracting all the code from the API reference. And API reference is actually the reference for all the abstract classes that are in the background. 
So I have created uh, an embedding file from all this, right? And the code embeddings.csv and code embeddings.json includes the API reference. And then I have also done this process one more time and removed the API reference. So there's the extracted code without the reference and also the embeddings, code embeddings without the API reference.csv and .json file. Uh, and I feel like without the API reference, we get better results, but you can test it and try it for yourself. Next step is the embed.py. We are again using Tenacity and we are using Langchain embeddings for this. That's why the requirements.txt is pretty, uh, pretty hefty for this. All the matplotlib, scipy, scikit-learn, and plotly is required for tick token because we are counting tokens with it. We have an embed item which uses the embeddings model which is OpenAI embeddings from Langchain. Then uh, we create an empty, initializing our embeddings DF. We add that code to the DF, and then we embed concurrently using Threadpool Executor, using 10 max workers. You can increase or decrease this as you like. And then we just simply do uh, the rest of the operations and save them to a CSV and JSON file. Now we have our vector database, both with and without API reference. And the final stage of our program is build llama index code.py file. Before I continue, you can search all my videos that I have created so far, all 170 plus of, of them. I just have to update my website with a new number and find the code download links and look at the descriptions and also search all my videos right here easily. And like I said, find the code download links. And it is says at www.echohive.live, link will be in the description. In our, in our final file, which generates our llama index code, we have the load embeddings function, which loads our embeddings. Here we are using CSV, and we are converting all the embeddings to a list using NumPy. And we have an embed item again, because we're going to have to embed at our user queries, right? We have our count tokens and then search embeddings. So we just do cosine similarity over the entire uh, data frame and assign a new column called similarities, then we sort it. And then we return uh, if we choose to print the uh, retrieve chunks, we can uh, print, we can print it. Uh, otherwise, we have a class called GPT Chat, which uh, actually is prompted to return um, the full code from user query. It has some methods such as taking user input, adding message, clearing messages, and then making an API call to GPT-4 in a streaming fashion. Then we initialize an instance of our GPT chat class and in a while through loop, we take user input and then we get all the related code by searching the embeddings. We are in this case, returning 20 chunks. Uh, 20 chunks comes to about anywhere from 2000 to 5,000 tokens. You feel free to experiment with this. If you set pprint to true, it'll also print all the uh, retrieve chunks and lines is how many lines of the retrieve chunks you want to print. And then we turn all the related code that values because it's a, a pandas data frame into a text string we simply print the amount of tokens in there and then we add that message saying return only the code which answers the user question based on the context provided and then we give it the context which we have retrieved then we get a response and we print a token count and then we clear the messages so this loop actually is not a true chat but it does just one shot uh, code creation, then we uh, write whatever response has been returned into response.py file. Like I said, all the code files will be available at Patreon. When you become a Patreon member, you're uh, not only supporting my future coding endeavors, but then you gain access to 120 very interesting uh, GPT related project files, which you can experiment and build upon, experiment with and build upon. I hope you found this uh, useful. If you like my content, uh, please give it a like and feel free to subscribe. Uh, and we also have a, a Discord server with like-minded individuals. If you like to chat about uh, GPT API and other large language model related topics, please join. The link will be in the description and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.